guys welcome to another tutorial on moments about a point and about an access in this tutorial we're going to look at this question which was requested by one of my students and the question is giving us what the force is and they're also giving us what the moment is and what they want us to find in the first part it's the coordinates of the point one point which lies along the line of action of our force now this is a little bit different in most cases, would be given stuff to do with the position vector that runs from where the moment is to be evaluated to a point where the force is passing. So just cross this with the force, and what we'd get is going to be the moment about that stated point. But this time around, they've given us what the moment is, they've given us what the force is. The question is, what is going to be our position vector, or what is going to be our point? So this is what we're trying to determine in this tutorial. Now, before we go any further, what I'd like you guys to be doing is, when I'm doing this calculation, just have a calculator with you, a pen and a paper, so that as I'm presenting these, just keep going through my work as well. That way, in case I make a small error, I write a 12.5 a instead of a 12.3, you are able to see it as well and, um, yeah, and follow through. And the best thing about that as well is it also helps you uh, revise or understand what I'm doing even better. So that is what I would advise you guys to be doing. But regardless, if at all I make a tiny error, I don't have someone to edit my stuff, so I have to work them out as I'm presenting. So if I make a tiny error, which is going to be very rare, but if I do, look, check in the comment section. It will be the first one. I'll pin it at the top. Okay, now let's proceed and see how we're supposed to work out this question. So the first thing that we need is the displacement vector. We're not given much really, but if you check this part in the question, they're telling us that the X coordinate is a one. What we have to find is the Y and Z coordinate of the point P. So to reach P, if I wanted to write my displacement vector running from O up to where P is, how do I have to move? Well, I have to move from O to this point in the X axis, that's a one meter. So I'll just write I, it's in the positive direction. Next, I have to move from here to there. This is in the y-axis or parallel to the y-axis and I have to cover that y. It's in the positive y. So I have plus y in the j. Then next, I have to go up all the way to the point P. So that's given by z. It's positive. So we're going to have plus z in the k direction. Now, notice one thing, you guys. Uh, the moment here from the question, it's specified to say it's the moment about a point O. That is why even my displacement vector, it's I'm taking it to say it's a displacement vector that runs from the point O up to a point along the line of action of the force. This point could have been anywhere along the line of action, but since P is the one that we are interested in, so we're running it from O to P. So that's that's what we're doing here. So with that in mind, we have our our, our Let's bring down the force and the moment as well. So we now have our force and also our moment. Now, again, like I pointed out earlier on, if we wanted the moment, we know to say all we need is the displacement vector running from the point where the moment is being evaluated up to any point on the line of action of our force cross the force itself. But this time, um, let's start with the right hand side. We'll come back to the moment later on. Let's start with the right hand side. The right hand side is the cross product of ROP cross the force itself, which is this. Now, of course, we know to say that to evaluate this cross product, we can just use that determinant method. First, let's bring down what we have for R, it's I plus Y, J plus Z. And then for the force, we have six. So this is a cross. Let me just indicate that we're doing, we're doing a cross product there. So this is 6.5 I plus 8.7 J plus 12.3 K. So we can use the determinant method where we have our I here. So for then our J here and our K here, then for the displacement vector, we have one Y and Z. And for the force, we have 6.5, 8.7, and 12.3. So just confirm these are the ones. 
that's 6, 8, and 12. Okay. Yes, those are the ones. So we now evaluate this determinant. I hope you guys know how it goes. Let me just do it very quickly. And, and we end up with an expression like this. So this is what this cross product will give us. But remember what the cross product gives us. It gives us what the moment about the point O is. Now, if you compared what we have, the moment is originally given to us. The moment is given to be this. This is what the moment is supposed to be. But we've just seen that the moment is going to be given by this expression. What does this imply? Well, we know to say the moment can, it is a vector, it can be expressed in terms of its components. And this actually displays exactly what that is. It's telling us that the x component of the moment will be given by this expression. The y component of the moment will be given by this expression. And the z component will be given by this expression. But when we come back to the, what is given, it's like the x component, we, we're actually being told what the exact values are going to be. So this, this statement or this expression, it's telling us exactly what we expect when we actually evaluate this. Because the same moment is being equated to this. The only slight difference here is that in this case, observe that this is a plus and this is a minus. So if I wanted to make this a plus, what would I have to do? Well, to make that a plus, you just have to do a simple trick. Just send that minus inside. If you send the minus inside, this expression, you have a plus here. What will be positive here will now be the 6.5. So you have 6.5 Z now being positive, and the 12 becomes the one that is now minus 12.3. So that this is a J. Every other term remains the same. So with this done now, you see that this expression, perhaps I should just bring everything else down, minus 8.7z, this is in the i, and then the other one we have plus 8.7 minus 6.5y in the k. So now we have a thing where this minus 16.2, it must be what we get when we evaluate this part. So because of that, we can actually equate them. We can easily say that 16.2 has to be the same as 12.3y minus 8.7z. So from here, we see that this equation, uh, we can't really go very far with it because we need uh, at least one of the unknowns to be, uh, to be given. So let's look at the second part. For the next part, we see that um, the 8.3, it has to be our result when this is evaluated. So if we were to somehow evaluate um, the 6.5 minus 12.3, it must give us 8.3 according to um, these statements. Since this is in the J, this is in the J, that will have to be the same. So, well, the best thing for this one, there's a Z here, is it? Yes, there's a Z, 6.5 Z. So what this implies, for the best thing for this one is we can actually simplify it. This gives us 8.3 plus 12.3 is equals to 6.5z. From here, we can easily add up this, or we can say z will be equals to 8.3 plus 12.3 divided by 6.5. This gives us z as 3.16923. Meters. Of course, we can round this off and say this is 3.1, uh, let's say 69 meters. Okay, so this is what we get as our z value. Well, we can now get our z value and use it in equation 1 because equation 1 related z and y. So we can get this expression, equation 1, but where we have z, we are now going to substitute that value for z. So this was our equation 1. So what we're going to do is now we're just going to put 3.169 where we have z. So this is 12.3 y minus 8.7. But then we're just multiplying by 3.169 here. Of course, the best thing is use the full value from a calculator so that you don't lose any significance here. So if we just multiply, I'll use the full value from my calculator still stored. So I'll multiply this by 8.7. And I get that 27.57 and so on. Then I'll just move things around. So I'll have minus 16.2. Then it will be plus. This is minus. It becomes plus the other side. 
that 27 i'll write it for short but i keep using the full one 0.57 this has to be equals to 12.3 y then make y the subject and what we're going to have is going to be that minus 16.2 plus 27.57 then divide this by the coefficient of the y which is the 12.3 so what we get here is going to be y is equal to 0 0.92 that's 925 you can now write uh, round it off a little bit 0 0.925 meters so we now have our y value we also have our z value but note that there's the last part that we didn't touch just for confirmation we can just use this and see if it actually gives us um, what we expect so if i touch that last value the last value now it's for the k component it's 2.7 being the same as this part let's see if it actually works what we have here is that 2.7 has to be the answer we get when we when we evaluate 8.7 minus 6.5 y so it's like it's relating uh, these values to y let's see if it will give us that value we found for y when we used everything else if it does then now we can have more confident in, confidence in our answer so we have 2.7 here is equals to 8 so of course just move uh, the y the other side and the 2.7 the other side we end up with 6.5 y equals to 8.7 minus 2.7 so that we have y is equals to 8.7 uh, minus 2.7 divided by 6.5 and this ends up giving us 0 0.923 so it ends up giving us 0 0.923 meters which is approximately the same as what we found here above what remember this was 0 0.9245 so we just rounded it off to uh to 0 0.25 so it's pretty much uh the same value so we can be confident in a, in what we found here so we have found what y is we have also found what uh, what z is so we are done with the first part so which leads us to the second part what do they want us to find determine the perpendicular distance d from the point o from point o to the line of action of f the first thing that i want to do here if i'm going to uh, get what the d is here i want to check how the force p relates to uh, the moment that we calculated m o that's the first thing that I want to do. Uh, so to check how they relate, I'm just going to get the dot product of the force P and the moment uh, MO. So let's see what that will be. So let's get that dot product. So our force vector is given as, that's 6.5 I plus 8.7 J, then plus 12.3 uh, K. So I want to get the dot product of the force vector with the moment itself so i get minus 16 i plus 8.3 j then plus 2.7 k so you know how dot product works if i'm going to get the dot product of these two i'll just multiply like for like so i'll have the 16 multiply 16.2 multiplying the 6.5 this is going to be negative so this is what you get when you evaluate that dot product and when you add all these what you see is that they give you um they give you something which is approximately zero of course uh, it won't might not be exactly zero but if we just stick to three significant figures you should see that you're going to get a zero what does that tell us it tells us this, that the force f is actually perpendicular to the moment mo now that becomes very very helpful knowing that the force and the moment are actually perpendicular it tells us that if we calculate so this was just a check to see if the force and the moment we got were perpendicular and we're seeing that they are actually perpendicular and since they're perpendicular we can now say that uh, if we calculate if we multiply the force f with the distance d directly what we get here is actually going to be the same moment m o but just its magnitude so if you multiply the force f by the perpendicular distance we are actually going to get the moment f of course this is a direct multiplication so we won't use uh, uh, the the force in cartesian vector form we can actually even just use the uh, the force itself as in the magnitude of the force as well 
since d here is just the magnitude of the distance. So this becomes possible just because the force and the moment are perpendicular to each other. So let's get what the magnitude of the force is. The force is given as that. The magnitude of f, I won't go through the math, I'll just do it separately, is going to be 16.4 newtons. That's the magnitude of our force. Once you have the magnitude of our force, now we also get the magnitude of the moment. So here we have 16.4. Now we need the magnitude of the moment as well. And the magnitude of the moment comes out as 18.4. So now we're saying that the 18.4 has to be what we get when we multiply the 16.2 by the distance d. So here now, it implies that we can get our d by just dividing 18.4 by 16.4. So if we do this, we get the distance as 1.12 meters. Of course, uh, due to rounding off, maybe this might, uh, might, might be a little bit off and so on, but this is how we actually get the value. So remember, it started with us getting the test to see if P and MO were perpendicular. So in an assessment, you might be allowed, you, it might be possible for you to just assume they are perpendicular and go right ahead and use this, um, this simple fact. Uh, but for safety, you might just want to, to try them to see if they're perpendicular first before going on to say the force times D will be equals to, um, will be equals to, uh, to the moment as well. Okay, so this is how you work out uh, that second part. So let's see what else they wanted us to do in this question. So in C now, they're saying, determine the direction, the direction angles of the resultant moment about O. Well, this one is pretty much straight forward. All we need, of course, is the magnitude of the moment. I think we got it earlier on. The magnitude of the moment, we calculated it as this one here. And of course, the units will still be the same, uh, Newton meter. So to get the directional angles, the moment itself is given as MO, that is minus 16.4I plus 8.3J plus 2.7K. For this one, I won't really go to the other side because it's something very quick that you can do. So remember how we relate to the directional angles. The directional angles are alpha, beta, and, um, and gamma. So we know to say cos alpha has to be equals to the x component over the magnitude. In this case, it's going to be mo in x, which is this, then divided by the magnitude of mo itself. So in this case, we're going to have, for cos alpha, uh, we're going to have alpha is equals to cos inverse of mox, the x component of the moment, which is minus 16.4, then divided by the magnitude of the moment, which is 18.4. So we evaluate this. We get alpha as 153 um, degrees. So this is what our alpha comes out to be. So then in a, in a similar way, we can also go right ahead and calculate what our, our beta is going to be. So our beta what we're going to have, just like um, we saw for alpha, we're going to have beta will be cos inverse of the y component. The y component is 8.3, so we'll have 8.3 divided by the magnitude of the moment, which is 18.4. So evaluate this. We get 63.18. So you can just say 0.2 degrees. In the same way, we can get what the beta is going to be, which is cos inverse, the z component. And the z component, according to the moment, the z component is uh, 2.7. So 2.7, and it's positive. So I'm going to have 2.7, and then divided by the magnitude of the moment, which is that. So again, this gives us 81.6 degrees. Okay, so just be, be careful. So like I pointed out, sometimes I get tired while presenting this. I've been doing this for 
uh, for some time you guys only see the length of the video but it also includes me doing the calculation in the background making errors and having to redo the video like i've just noticed that i actually used i, co I wrote down the moment as minus 16.4 but the question here actually gives us the moment as uh, 16.2 so the magnitude is fine here. It's just this one here where we use this minus 16.2. It's supposed to be 16.4. Uh, it's supposed to be 16.2. So I hope you guys used the correct value there. So the only thing it affects is um, here, of course, this is not 16 point that. This is 16.2. So when you divide it by that and get the angle, let's see what. So this is coming out as 1. 151.6 which is just 152 degrees so not not a big difference but still just be very careful you guys sometimes i get tired i don't have anyone to edit my work i have to do it on my own so yeah look out for for such tiny tiny things everything else is supposed to be fine okay so with that done we then move on to the last part what do they want us to do in the last in the last part not the last part we actually have two parts the saying Point B is located 1 over 3, the Z component of P. Find the moment caused by the force F about the point B. So the moment caused by the force F about the, mo about the, point, about the point B. So I'll do this one. I think this will be the last one I'll do. You guys can try to play around with, uh, uh, with E. So when it comes to, to this one, uh, we want to find the moment caused about this point B. So let's see, is it about that point? Point B is located at that point uh, below the Z component. Find, yeah, one, one over three, the Z component. Find the moment caused by the force F about the point B. Well, this is a little bit easy because we want to find the moment about this point. So our arrow will literally be this displacement here. So this will be our arrow O, not O, this is going to be our arrow B, P. So this is the displacement vector that we want. So the moment caused by our force about the point B will be equal to the cross product of a displacement vector running from B to P with the force, with our force F. So if you see the way this one works, um, our, for, our displacement vector arrow B, P, it's literally in the Z axis. So it will only have the Z component of the point P since everything else will be zeros. It just goes strictly upwards. Everything will be zeros. And see how the Z component relates to the Z component of P. The Z component of P is what we found earlier. And we found 3.169. Now a quarter of, of that is going to be just this divided by... Um, by three of course you have to see the question is saying it is located where is that located one over three uh it's located one over three the z component of p the one over three is from here to the ground this is where the quarter is implying that this other part which is the displacement from b to p it's actually two quarters it has to be two over three the z component so two over three multiplying that 3.169 what do we get we get this as 2.113 so this is what we get in the z axis in other words we can conclude that our b p will literally be going upwards and it will be 2.113 in the z direction it doesn't have an x component or a Y component, it only has the Z component since it's pointing, it's literally vertical, parallel to the Z axis. So the cross product becomes even easier because to get M about the point B then becomes this same vector, 2.113 Z, then we have to get its cross product with the force F. The force F, um, we have the force F, let's just take it down. The force F is given as 6.5i plus 2.7j plus 12.3k. This is what the force uh, F is. So if we get this force, now bring it down.
So let's just remove what we don't need for now. So you can remove these as well. So this is the cross product we are evaluating. Well, for this one, we don't even need the determinant method. This one, we can just go right ahead. So we have when these cross, it's going to be 2.112 multiplying 6.5. That's 2.112. So I'm using 2.113. Then multiplying 6.5. We get 13 point seven three so i'll take it up to this value and then the unit vectors z cross i then again it will multiply the next value so again it's two point one one three cross two point seven i get plus five point seven now uh, that's 705 the unit vectors z cross j and then next uh i'm using z sorry this is not z this is k so this is k this is k here as well so the unit vector i wrote i wrote a z there that's a k for the z axis this here is also a k here Okay, so now that is corrected, when we cross it with the 12.5, we know we're going to have plus the 2.5, 2.113 cross 12.3, we get 25.99, but it's going to be k cross k. Now, we have to simplify the unit vectors. Now, what you get here is that when the unit vectors are the same, then the cross product will be zero. Here, the unit vectors are the same, so this term is going to give us a zero. We don't even consider it, but it's here where the unit vectors are different, where we have to pay attention. I'll put the unit vectors all down. I cross J cross K, then I'll repeat I one more time. So if I'm moving in the forward direction, the unit vectors, you always get the one missing. So I cross J will give you K. So these two will give you k. And if you are to cross j cross k, it will give you i. And if you crossed k cross i, it will give you j. The reverse, i cross k, will give you a negative. So i cross k will give you negative j. k cross j will give you negative i. And j cross i will give you negative k. This is one way you can understand the unit vectors. So in this case, I'm seeing k cross i. So I know k cross i, I'm here, k cross i, it gives positive j. So I know to say this expression, I am going to have, this is 13.73, and the unit vector will now be a positive j. Then here I had k cross j. k cross j is the reverse of this part. So it's a reverse of this part, k cross j. The forward gave i, so I know I'm still getting i. But since it's now backwards, it has to be negative. So the whole term becomes minus 5.705. The unit vector will be i. So this becomes the solution. So my solution is minus 5.705i, then plus 13.73j. So this becomes the moment about the point B. Okay, so... Uh, for the last one, I won't really do the last one, but I'll just give you guys um, a guide on how you actually work it out. So I'll ask you guys to try it. Let me know what you find in the comment section, and then we'll see if it's if it's correct. So here they're saying that a point A is located two over five of the y component at the point uh, at at point of point B. They say it's located. A point A is located two over five of the y component of P. So this is our point A. They're saying the y component of P, now 2 over 5 of it. So 2 over 5 of that. Remember we found the y component of P? Uh, the y component was here. So now they're saying 2 over 5 of this value. That will be the distance from uh, the x-axis to where A is. So with that done, they're also saying find the component of the resultant moment that... Um, 
the component of the resultant moment along the AH, uh, along the AH, where H is not shown in the diagram, but it is located at that point. So all that you will have to do here, since notice that you will have the coordinates of A. A here will, will have the coordinates in the X, it will still have this one here. So it will still have one, that is, that is just going to be one, comma. In the Y, it will have the two over five, two over five, whatever that Y value was. Then in the Z, the component will be a zero because A, you don't have to go up. Then the point that they are talking about, the point H. The point H, on the other hand, they've specified the coordinates. Even if it's not shown, all we need are the coordinates. They're saying it's six, comma, negative three, comma, eight. This is where the point H is. So what you have to do is, you need, you remember how you get, um, how you project a vector onto an axis, because the line AH is literally an axis. So to get the projection of our moment, we need to get the dot product of a unit vector that runs along AH. Get its dot product with the moment vector MO. Of course, the order doesn't matter. What you get here is going to be the desired component that they want. So we need this unit vector. To get the unit vector, we need to get the unit vector running along AH, we need a displacement vector that runs along AH, then divided by the magnitude of the same vector, its own magnitude. That is how we're going to get the unit vector. So to get the displacement vector, of course, this is where the, compo the, the coordinates come in. So we're starting from A going to H. So the displacement vector from A to H is going to be the final minus the initial. So it's going to be six minus one in the I plus in the J, it's going to be minus three minus two over five, what that Y component was. Remember, we already know what Y is, so you can just put that value there. And then plus again, this is in the J. Then plus in the K direction, final is eight minus zero. This is in the K. So simplify this, it will give you what RAH will be. Then get the magnitude of RAH. Once you get the magnitude of, the R of RAH, you're then going to go ahead and get the unit vector from A to H by just dividing them. That is going to be RAH divided by its magnitude. Once you're done with that, you're going to get the dot product of the unit vector with the moment. And that is going to give you the answer they want. So Again, the order doesn't matter, dot the moment about the point O. So if we look at this, they're saying, um, find the component of the resultant moment along AH, where H is not shown. So the resultant moment that they're looking for, that they're using here, uh, the assumption is that it's still this moment that we're using. This is the resultant moment that is, that is happening here, or that we have. So we're still using this moment, but all we want is its component along the line AH. So that is how you're going to approach it. That is um, how I would approach it. So let's see what you guys think. Leave your comment in the comment section. So I hope you guys found this helpful. It really took a lot. I had several mistakes here and there. I had to redo this, but hope you guys were able to, to follow through. So see you guys in the next tutorial.